So let us understand the example, the glorious life, the life of compassion, life of dedication of Ladini Mataji. Ladini Mataji was born in this country, United States of America, in the year 1949. So, just how many years ago? 70 years ago. She was born 70 years ago, 70, in 1949. This is 2019. Her name was Linda, Linda Jury. She was born in the state of Michigan. She was born in a well-to-do family. Her father was a doctor, he was a physician. They were financially well off. Mother was a homemaker and she had an elder brother and a sister. Three siblings, Linda was the youngest. She had a very happy childhood and she was very bubbly, very enthusiastic, very charming, very lively, full of energy. She was an extrovert. She loved to talk, talk, talk. She loved to make friends. She loved to have sleepovers. She loved to play outdoors. And she loved to write poems. She had a pet dog and she had a pet frog. <coughs> she graduated from high school. Then she went to college. Throughout her childhood, she was very compassionate. Once in school, she had a science project where they had to study a mouse. So they had to do different experiments with a mouse, uh, behavioral experiments. That if you do this, how does the mouse behave? If you do this, how does the mouse, mouse behave? So that experiment went on for several days. There was no torture to the mouse. The mouse was supposed to be kept very nicely. And at the end of the experiment, you had to turn in your mouse so that the mouse could be killed. Because they didn't just want to release the mice like that. So they gave mice to all the children to study, perform your study, and then you give it back and you will kill them. So on the last day, when she was supposed to turn in the, the mouse, her mouse, she had even given the mouse a name. She was very personal. She didn't have the heart. This mouse who has been with me for so many days, this mouse who has taken shelter of me, who is my friend, how can I give him to be killed? So she came home on the bus and her mother saw and it appeared as if she had become pregnant. Linda had become pregnant. There was a bump on her belly. So mother asked her, what happened? What's there? So Linda said, oh, I actually took a little cage to school. I didn't want to turn in my mouse and I put my mouse in the cage and I rescued him, I brought him back. I thought the teacher and the bus driver will not allow me to um, bring my mouse back. So I, I had to hide him under my skirt. So she hid, hid him and, under her dress and brought. She was so compassionate, so simple hearted. She went to college and when she was in college in the first semester, she met a boy called Mike and they both liked each other and decided to get married. They got married after completing the first semester of college. And then they decided that this is very dry. This uh, mundane knowledge is very dry. We need some spiritual knowledge. So they decided to search for truth. Now Linda's husband, Mike, he was more spiritually hungry at that time. So he started getting books from the library on Buddhism, on um, so many Eastern philosophies and started experimenting even with drugs, thinking that if I do, uh, if I take uh, intoxicants and drugs, it will help me have a spiritual consciousness. You know, in those days, the hippie movement was very popular. And um, these kind of philosophies were very common. So he experimented. He experimented with uh, drugs and other things. Hare Krishna. And uh, he was not satisfied. Then one day, Mike, the husband of Linda, 
He was walking on a street and somebody, some devotee gave him Srila Prabhupada's book. And the book he brought home and all night he sat and like a thirsty person, he just read the whole book cover to cover. And he had never heard of Krishna. Linda had never heard of Krishna. They had never heard of Bhakti. But by reading that one small Prabhupada's book, their entire life changed. That book was a summary study of Srimad Bhagavatam. Not a summary study, just a very brief summary of Srimad Bhagavatam by Srila Prabhupada. Wisdom of God. By reading this one book, he was completely transformed. And he showed that book to Linda. And they both read that book together again. And they decided that we have to somehow find Krishna. Because in that book, Srila Prabhupada writes that you can become happy only if you surrender to Krishna. So they wanted to find Krishna. So they didn't know who Krishna was. They didn't know who devotees were. They just prayed that, oh Krishna, whoever you are, please bring us in the association of your devotees. And miraculously, they found some devotees the very next day when they were walking down the street, going to their job. They were just doing some odd jobs. When they were going to their workplace, they met some devotees. This was in Detroit, Michigan. So they decided to visit the temple. Both Linda and Mike, they visited the temple together. And they liked everything about Krishna consciousness at the Detroit temple. That time the Detroit temple president was Bhagwan Prabhu. They loved the deities, they loved the devotees, they loved the prasad, they loved chanting of Hare Krishna Mahamantra, they loved Kirtan, they loved going out on Harinam Sankirtan, book distribution. They just loved everything about Krishna consciousness. <coughs> they were so receptive that the devotees in the Detroit temple told both of them, why don't you move in into the temple and stay with us? In those days, almost all devotees lived in the temple. So they agreed and they went to their apartment. They packed all their bags. They got a U-Haul truck. I was surprised to read that even in 1969, there was U-Haul. So they, they, they booked a U-Haul uh, truck. They put all their little belongings, whatever they had, their clothes, whatever belongings they have, they put in that U-Haul truck and they were driving to the Detroit temple. And as Krishna would have it, as they were driving the U-Haul truck, door opened and all their things flew out of the truck and uh, they were on a highway and it just fell, smashed to pieces and there were other uh, cars that were coming which drove over their clothes and their belongings and everything was crushed and damaged. So they just looked back at all their belongings, everything gone. They both thought that this is Krishna's doing. They could see Krishna's hand in this. They said, Krishna doesn't want us to wear those jeans and t-shirts and jackets. Krishna wants us to wear dhoti kurta and sari. So all their belongings were gone and they said, let it go, we will not collect them. And they just continued driving. They came and they just wore sari, dhoti kurta, tilak, Prabhuji shaved up and they just became devotees, started chanting 16 rounds of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Every day, started following the four regulative principles and they became devotees. Now, Linda became a more fired up devotee. <laughs> Although she was introduced to Krishna consciousness by her husband, Mike, she became very fired up. She was only 19 years old and she asked the temple president, Bhagwan Prabhu, how do I make spiritual advancement? And Bhagwan Prabhu said, you can make spiritual advancement by following the instructions of your spiritual master. So you should write letters to Srila Prabhupada. This is 1969. So Ladini Mataji, who was Linda, she wrote a letter to Srila Prabhupada that me and my husband, Mike, we have joined the Detroit temple. We like it very much here. We like chanting. We like uh, Sankirtan. So thank you, Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada wrote back a letter to Linda and blessed her and blessed her husband, uh, Mike. 
and he told that you stay there in the temple stay there under the guidance of the temple leadership and make spiritual advancement and then she followed all the uh, all the process very nicely very diligently and 6 months after staying in the temple she wrote another letter to shila prabhupada and she said shila prabhupada i have heard in your recorded lectures i have read in your books i have heard and our temple president also has told me that to make spiritual advancement i need to take serious vows of initiation so you are my guru shila prabhupada can you please can you please accept me as your disciple and initiate me and shila prabhupada knew the sincerity of linda he immediately wrote back a letter to linda and told her my dear daughter linda i initiate you from today your name will be ladini devi dasi ladini is one of the three antaranga shaktis of krishna internal potencies of krishna ladini shakti is shrimati radharani and you are radharani servant shila prabhupada writes in that letter so your name will be ladini devi dasi the servant of shrimati radharani the maid servant of shrimati radharani and shila prabhupada said i am enclosing tulsi japa mala in this envelope and i have duly chanted on the on this tulsi mala so this tulsi mala is for you these are your initiation beads your name ladri devi dasi i am sending a separate letter to your husband giving him his name giving him his beads now you must promise to chant a minimum 16 rounds of hare krishna mahamantra attentively good quality 16 rounds and you must follow the four regulative principles and you serve under the local leadership you follow my instructions and i promise you you will go back home back to godhead in this lifetime i will give you all perfection you just follow this process nicely ladini mata ji when she received this initiation in a letter from shila prabhupada in 1969 Oh, she was so excited. She was so happy, and she took it so seriously. She took Shri Prabhupada's instructions so seriously, just like Guru Baba Maharaj took the instructions of Narad Muni very stri- strictly, very seriously, and followed everything very diligently. So did Ladini Mata Ji. She would wake up before most of the devotees in Detroit Temple. She would attend Mangal Arti. Tulsi Arti, she would chant Shri Shastakam, and she would chant 16 rounds of Hare Krishna Mahamantra with great intensity and concentration, high quality 16 rounds. She would hear Bhagavatam class attentively, and whole day she would do services. My dear friends, I hope, I hope you are hearing, you are listening attentively to the glories of Ladini Devi Dasi. If you hear attentively. about the glories of ladini mata ji i promise you and i pray that you will find great inspiration in your spiritual life today itself so please listen attentively ladini mata ji was thirsty <coughs> thirsty for service she wanted to serve the devotees she wanted to serve shila prabhupada she wanted to serve krishna and in the year when she was in detroit prabhupada he was translating books so shila prabhupada would send his tape to the detroit temple there were only six temples that time in usa only six temples so shila prabhupada would send his tape recordings of his like lectures that he would dictate in the dictaphone to detroit and ladini mata ji was given the amazing service of listening very carefully to shila prabhupada's tape and typing it transcribing shila prabhupada's dictations so ladini mata ji was engaged in transcribing shrimad bhagavatam can you imagine what a intimate service it was prabhupada would produce 
at least one tape every day because Prabhupada would speak for four or five hours every night at least. And it would take Ladini Mataji around two days to properly transcribe one tape of Srila Prabhupada because initially she had difficulty understanding Prabhupada's Bengali accent. But very soon she understood what Prabhupada was saying. <coughs> and all day she was engaged in hearing Guru Vani and transcribing it, typing it up. In this way, Ladini Mataji in the Detroit temple was engaged in very intimate service of Srila Prabhupada. Then her husband decided to move to um, Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio. So like a faithful wife, uh, Ladini Mataji also went with her husband there. And when they were there, they were serving there. Um, a devotee carved, Prabhupada had nicknamed this devotee Vishwakarma, who was very good at carving. He carved very big deities of Jagannath Baldev Subhadra. And when they came, when Ladini Mataji for the first time in her life in 1969, she saw Jagannath Baldev Subhadra. She completely fell in love with Jagannath Baldev Subhadra. She just fell in love with Jagannath Baldev Subhadra. And she could not take her eyes off Jagannath. She just could not take her eyes away from Jagannath. She was completely mesmerized by Jagannath. She would stand in front of the altar for hours just worshipping Lord Jagannath with her eyes, just looking at Jagannath. And seeing her dedication, she was made the pujari of Jagannath Baldev Subhadra. And there was a Mataji who was personally trained by Srila Prabhupada in duty worship. Ladini Mataji worked under her and learned the process of duty worship from her. And all throughout she would write letters to Srila Prabhupada and Prabhupada would reply to her. <coughs> it is described that during Aarti, during Kirtan, when devotees would be dancing in Kirtan, Ladini Mataji also would dance. But the special feature of Ladini Mataji's dancing was she would never take her eyes off Jagannath. So if Jagannath is in front of her, when, when she would turn this way while dancing, her eyes would be fixed on Lord Jagannath. She would go like this, her eyes would still be on Jagannath. For the entire Kirtan as she would be dancing, her eyes would be fixed on Lord Jagannath. She would not take her eyes off Lord Jagannath. She could not. She was completely charmed by Jagannath. And the devotees noticed. She did not say anything to anybody, but devotees noticed this this Mataji is, is very, very different than all of us. First of all, she chants her round with such intensity. Each and every mantra that she chants it with such intensity. And she worships Jagannath with such intensity. She has got so much devotion. Everybody noticed her. And then later on, she was sent to Los Angeles to further master deity worship. And for some time she went to Los Angeles to train and get completely trained up in deity worship. And after that, there was Srila Prabhupada established a new Vrindavan. And there was a great need for devotees to stay there and serve. So Ma, uh, Ladini Mataji's husband decided that we should go to New Vrindavan. They need devotees there. Then we should serve. Her husband was very close to Kirtananda Maharaj. So he decided to go there to New Vrindavan and help Kirtananda Maharaj. So Ladini Mataji also like a faithful wife, she went to New Vrindavan. And she started staying there. And the Jagannath deities were brought to New Vrindavan to worship. And they were kept in a place called Bahulavan in New Vrindavan. And in Bahulavan, Jagannath, Baldev, Subhadra and Sudarshan, the deities were to be worshipped. And they all chose Ladini Mataji to worship them because she had so much love for Jagannath. Now, there were two temples in New Vrindavan at that time. 
there was the main temple where Radha Vrindavan Chandra were worshipped. That is where the Brahmachari Ashram was. That is where all the devotees lived. And <clears throat> 15 minutes away, walking distance away, 15-20 minutes, was on another mountain, was a place called Bahudavan, where the second temple existed and Jagannath, Baldev, Subhadra, Sudarshan, these deities were there. And Ladini Mataji was told to become the Pujari for Jagannath, Baldev, Subhadra. Ladini Mataji, who was a 20-year-old girl, lived alone in Bahulavan, in New Vrindavan, West Virginia. All alone in Bahulavan, worshipping Jagannath, Baldev, Subhadra. Her husband was living with the rest of the devotees, with Radha Vrindavan Chandra. And Ladini Mataji was completely in bliss. All day I can worship my Pranadath, the Lord of my life, Jagannath. I have to wake him up. I have to offer him Arti, Mangal Arti. I have to feed him. I have to offer him six Artis every day. She would do six Artis every day. She would cook three elaborate bhogas and six total six bhogas, three were small, like she would just offer milk or she would offer a fruit, but she would cook three bhogas every day for Jagannath Bhagavad Subhadra. Six artis every day, all by herself. So she would offer the arti, she would sing the arti, she would cook while Krishna was eating, she would do her Gayatri. She was in total bliss. Then in the morning she would come out, she would sit in front of Jagannath Bhandar Subhadra and give Bhagavatam class. Nobody to hear, just Ladini Mataji alone in that room. It was a shack. Shack is like an outhouse. Outhouse of a farmhouse. It is meant to store things. So it was just one room. Bahulavan was one room. Just a shack where Jagannath Bhandar Subhadra lived. It was totally makeshift. There was no running water. There was no electricity. I repeat, in Bahulavan, where Ladini Mataji, a 20-year-old devotee, lived all alone in the middle of the forest, there was no electricity. There was no running water. There was a river which was around two miles away. Two miles away. Ladini Mataji would walk every day, two miles, carry water and walk back two miles. And there was no toilet. My dear friends, please hear, this is 1970s. This is not Satya Yuga or Treta Yuga or Dwapa Yuga. This is not even the beginning of Kali Yuga. This is not the time of Shripad Ramanuja Acharya. This is not the time of Shripad Madhava Acharya. This is just few years ago, few decades ago. This is a disciple of Srila Prabhupada. 20 year old Ladini Mataji was living alone in Bahulavan. She would walk two miles to fetch water. There were no taps, nothing. What was Ladini Mataji's bathroom? She put four wooden sticks in the ground outside Bahulavan temple. You know how we have those big plastic sheets, black or blue, that we put like a tarp that we put in our house when we invite devotees to sit on and eat prasadam so that the floor will not get spoiled. So those plastic, big plastic sheet, she wrapped around those four, four poles and she would just creep under that. There was no roof, it was open air bathroom. And she put a brick inside. She would stand on that brick and pour water on herself. Not hot water. There was no electricity. There was no flowing water. There was no heater. Cold water she would pour on herself three times a day. Take a bath very quickly. It was so cold and austere. No door to the bathroom. No roof to the bathroom. Nothing. And she would quickly dress herself in a sari and go back in and start worshipping Jagannath. And what was the toilet for Ladini Mataji? The devotees had made an arrangement that there was a um, human excreta trench 
<coughs> where all devotees would go and pass stool and urine. It was around 15 minutes, 20 minutes walking distance. Because there were no toilets, there was no plumbing. This is the early 1970s. Only few devotees. So you had to walk quite a distance, dig a trench, sit down, do what you have to do, then clean, wash yourself with a tumbler. You carry some water in a tumbler. Again, cold water. You wash yourself, you put mud on your refuse, cover it up, and you walk back to the temple. Don't enter the temple, which is just a shack. Outside, you put that tumbler in a corner, you crawl under the uh, plastic in the makeshift bathroom, if you can call it. There is a bucket of cold water there. You take a shower, you take a shower, you wear your sari, and you go inside. There is nobody, there is only Ladini Mataji, and you start worshipping. Once a week, Ladini Mataji would walk to Vrindavan Chandra Temple. Radha Vrindavan Chandra temple to get the supply for the whole week. She would get milk, she would get some vegetables, some ghee for cooking and that's it. She would get some cotton so she could make the cotton mix herself. So Ladini Mataji was the pujari, she was the cook, she used to speak the Bhagavatam class and she was living all alone. There were raccoons, there were bears. There were all these wild animals there. And Ladini Mataji was all alone, living happily in Bahulavan, in New Vrindavan, 24 hours a day, engaged in the service of Jagannath Baldev Subhadra. And she would make beautiful preparations for Jagannath. Let us discuss the daily schedule of Ladini Mataji. She followed this schedule for 18 years. One, eight, 18 years Ladini Mataji followed this schedule in New Rindam until 1987, 1988. 17 to 18 years she followed this schedule from 1970 practically. She would wake up in the morning at 2 o'clock. 2 a.m. Ladini Mataji would wake up. She would immediately fold the chadar on which she slept on the hard floor. Immediately roll it up and put it aside. She would run to take the bath in the plastic wrap, open roof bathroom, cold bath, just few tumblers of cold, ice cold water. Sometimes she had to crush that ice so she could take a bath and run back inside in her sari and chant japa, shivering cold. There is no heating. There is nothing. It's just a wooden shack, Bahulavan. She would chant her 16 rounds in one and a half hours intensely with total love. And four o'clock, she would start preparing for Mangalarti. So two o'clock, she wakes up. She gets ready very quickly. In 15 minutes, by 2.15, 2.30, she starts chanting her japa. By 4 a.m., her 16 rounds are completed. High quality, high class 16 rounds. And 4 o'clock, she would start preparing for Mangalarti. 4.30, she would wake up. Jagannath Bhagavad Subhadra and offer them arati. Their hot milk would be ready. She would keep milk for boiling at 4 o'clock. She would never do her work while chanting. Chanting was exclusive business. Exclusive one and a half hours, one hour, 45 minutes. High class, high quality 16 rounds. And then 4 o'clock she would start preparing for Mangalarti. And then her day would start. She would offer Mangalarti while Jagannath Bandha Subhadra were drinking hot milk that she had boiled at 4 o'clock. She would start cooking their breakfast. <laughs> Then she would go inside, dress them. She would dress them. And then, so what was the japa time for the other devotees? She would be cooking and dressing. She would dress them 
and then she would offer them nice breakfast then she would do shringar uh, darsh shringar aarti she would chant go in the madhi purusham by herself <laughs> then she would sit she would pick up prashila uh, prabhupad's book and read for one hour no audience she would give the bhagavatam class herself this reading from shila prabhupad's books for one hour then she would that is bhagavatam class then she would keep the bhagavatam away hmm? then again she would go start cooking for the next offering and what was cooking my dear friend she didn't have a, a sophisticated modular kitchen where you just turn a knob and boom the natural gas uh, flame comes she had to create a fire she had to chop wood ladiri mata ji had to walk into the forest looking for a dried pieces of sticks and twigs that had fallen down from the trees she would never cut a living tree she would go into the forest trying to cut bring dry wood so that she could come make a fire and cook for jagannath there was no heating in the shack <laughs> it was one shack with jagannath and when she would cook everything would become smoky inside what to do there is no exhaust fan or anything but she would sit and cook for jagannath balde subhadra sudarshan chakra or a wooden by burning wood and then she would offer it and another aarti and she would make cotton mix aarti was very simple just incense ghee lamp chamar like a very simple aarti there were no flowers to make garlands so she had made jewelry with her own loving hands plastic jewelry she would offer that to jagannath balle subhadra sudarsha very simple but she was doing everything by herself every day even when occasionally some devotees would come when new vrindavan community expanded all the expansion happened at radha vrindavan chandra and then they built more temples they built prabhupad palace but bahulavan was bahulavan the most austere place where only one devotee lived ladevi mata ji so after some time uh, her husband he said let's go to the mayami temple in florida the weather is much better it is less austere but that meant ladevi mata ji had to leave jagannath temple to subhadra in bahulavan new vrindavan and go with her husband to mayami So Ladini Mata ji said that in the last uh, two years we have moved so much. We were in Detroit Temple, then we went to Los Angeles, we went to Cleveland, Ohio, we came to West Virginia, New Vrindavan. Four te- temples we have already moved. Now again going to Miami, Florida. I don't want to move. So her husband said, "Okay, you stay here. Then I will go. I will leave you. Either you come with me, or you stay here with Jagannath." that was a dharma sankat for ladevi mata ji what to do no i have to serve my husband but i can't leave jagannath why should we leave we are happily situated we, we, we are serving nicely in shila prabhupad's mission why should we leave i can't leave who will worship my jagannath who will take care of jagannath who will cook for him who will live here so she told her husband i cannot leave jagannath with tears in her eyes husband said okay that's fine i'm going and he went he left her so ladini mata ji chose to stay in new vrindavan she could not leave her jagannath she had just two sarees and there was no laundry mat no washing machine so she had to wash her own clothes with whatever water she brought and hang it out to dry and just two sarees so very very simple lifestyle very simple lifestyle and she would make cinnamon rolls for jagannath she was an expert cook very simple but very expert and she, when when she would go to get the groceries once a week to radha vrindavan chandra temple she would take jagannath's mahaprasad for all the devotees and the devotees loved her cinnamon rolls the devotees loved her sandesh she would make very beautiful sandesh from milk devotees loved it she had no spa. she had she didn't have any rose water or anything to make the sandesh just milk and sugar and boiling it on that uh, makeshift kitchen where you are burning 
a dried wooden sticks brought from the forest of New Vrindavan to cook. Very, very simple. But she was very steady in her sadhana. And she would put Jagannath Mandir Subhadra to sleep at 9 p.m. After offering them six artis, she would do Gaur Arti. She would do everything. She would do Guru Arti. She would sing all the artis herself. She would read Bhagavad Gita in the evening, Bhagavad Gita class. No audience, just herself and her Jagannath Mandir Subhadra, living all alone. Her sari had become brown. <laughs> sari had become off white brown because of the mud, sleeping on the floor, washing the sari on the floor, uh, the dust when she would hang it outside, the dust that would settle. She didn't have any soap. No soap, no detergent. She would just bath also with just water. No deodorant, nothing. Over the years, her sari became brown in color. Devotees thought it's a brown sari, but actually it was a muddy, muddy sari, the dust of New Vrindavan. She did this for 17 to 18 years. And once what happened, as New Vrindavan community was growing, there was a leader there who became very envious of Lagini Mataji. What is there to become envious of her? What is she doing to anybody? She's just living alone. But her fame increased. Matajis from all over the world would come to learn how to worship Jagannath from Ladinima. They would stay for 3-4 days with her, learn how to worship Jagannath, see her bhav, how she was absorbed in Jagannath, completely absorbed. She would talk to Jagannath. She would talk to Jagannath. She would write poems in English for Jagannath. Very beautiful, very sweet poems. So this devotee, he came and he saw how Ladini Mataji is worshipping Jagannath Baldev Subhadra. And he noticed many discrepancies. First of all, this leader, he said that Ladini Mataji is not worshipping Jagannath with opulence. She is, Jagannath, she is not worshipping Jagannath with Aishwarya. She is worshipping Jagannath in a very simple way. She makes Jagannath wear just simple cloth. No, she would she tie a simple turban, no mukut. So Jagannath is Krishna, he is Dwarkadish. He should be worshipped with opulence. So his first problem was she doesn't worship opulently. Then he said, she is very dirty. This Pujari, Ladini Mataji is very dirty, he said. Plus she is a woman. Plus she is a woman. So how can she worship Jagannath continuously? So we should find a male Pujari. So we can ask Ladini, to go somewhere else, either she can come to Radha Vrindam, Chandra temple and take up some other service or we can send her to some other temple. But she cannot be, she cannot have Jagannath to herself. This leader, he became envious of her. And he, he appointed somebody else to come and take charge of Jagannath Baldev Subhadra. And Ladini Mataji had to leave. He found a Brahmachari to serve Jagannath Baldev Subhadra. Ladini Mataji became mad when she heard that she was going to be removed from the service of Jagannath from this other. She became transcendentally mad. Ladini Mataji was very meek and humble. She never spoke back to any devotee. It was just not her nature. She would talk to Mataji. She was very bubbly, chirpy, you know, very talkative with Matajis. But when it came to men, she was very, very quiet. She would not talk to leaders or talk back, argue. That was not her nature. So when this decision was made to remove her from the service of Jagannath, she became mad. She went crazy. And all she could do was write in her diary. And she wrote a beautiful poem to Jagannath Baldev Subhadra. And she chastised Jagannath Baldev Subhadra in that poem. Our poor little Ladini, Ladini Mataji, she wrote to Jagannath, Chastising him. He said, I know, I know, Jagannath. You like opulence. You like the opulence of Dwarka. You don't like the simple flannel that I make you wear. You don't like it, no? You don't like the simplicity of my bhakti. You want opulence. You want Aishwarya. I know. You want someone 
to put a helmet, a mukut on your head. You don't like my simple plastic jewelry. You want elaborate jewelry. You don't like this simple shack where your Ladini is keeping you. You want to go to the big Radha Vrindavan Chandra temple. You want many devotees to worship you with awe and reverence. You don't like the flavor of my simple bhakti. You want to leave me and go, no? go, go. If you want to leave me and go, go. After all, you are, you want to be in the Dwarka Dish mood. But you know what my bhav is, Jagannath, my mood of worshipping you. My spiritual master said, my name is Ladini Devi Dasi. Ladini Shakti Srimati Radharani. I am a servant of Srimati Radharani. I am a Brajvasi. And you are Radharani's Krishna who left her and went to Dwarka. Jagannath means Dwarka Dish Krishna. But Radharani, Lalita Sakhi, Vishaka Sakhi, all the gopis in Kurukshetra have caught you and they have brought you back to Vrindavan and they have engaged me in serving you. And my seva is to make sure you are happy in the simple life of Vrindavan, in the simple life of new Vrindavan. And my mood is to always keep you with Radharani in Vrindavan. Therefore, I don't worship you. I don't like to worship you with awe and reverence. I don't like to worship you with the Aishwarya Bhava of Dwarka. I am Radharani servant. I want to keep you in Vrindavan so that Radharani can serve you. That is my bhav. And if you want to leave me, then go. What can I do? But I don't have anybody other than you, Jagannath. And then she would start crying. Please don't leave me. Please don't leave me. I don't have anybody else. You have many devotees in Dwarka. But I only have you. Please don't leave me and go. She would cry. And this devotee was growing more and more envious of her. He was trying to figure out how to get rid of Ladini Mataji. And he was getting sadistic pleasure. Oh, she's attached to Jagannath. I will see. You should be not attached. You should do whatever service your leader tells you. Let me give her some other service. So he was trying to test her. But out of envy. Mad elephant offense. When we, when we offend a simple devotee like Ladini Mataji, you can imagine what will happen. Because this leader of New Vrindavan, he had envy towards Ladini Mataji. He felt envious when every Sunday she would come to Radha Vrindavan Chandra temple and bring the Maha Prasad of Jagannath and all the devotees would flock around her and ask her how she is worshipping. They would glorify her. He became very envious. And because he had Dvesh, Hanti Nindati Vai Dveshti Vaishnavana Bhidandati Krundyate Yatino Harsham Darshane Patanami Shai. The six types of Vaishnava Prana. Because he had Dvesh, he had envy, he had ill feelings for Ladini Mataji. This leader, this Prabhupada disciple, who was a big leader in New Rata, his heart became poisoned with Anathas. He became attracted to the wife of another man in New Rindavan. He had an extramarital affair with that Mataji and both of them ran away from New Rindavan. They eloped. This leader was a Brahmachari. He fell in love with the wife of another devotee. And that Mataji and this leader who was envious of Ladini Mataji ran away. And they gave up Krishna consciousness. My dear friends, this is the result of, of harboring envy in the heart. Especially if that envy is towards a great devotee. The greater the devotee, the more severe the punishment. This devotee fell down. And Ladini Mataji, she remained in the service of Jagannath. And then she wrote another poem for Jagannath. 
that my dear jagannath thank you for accepting this service from the servant of radharani thank you so much please don't ever 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 leave me and jagannath mallu sudra came in the dream came in her dream and told her we will never 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 leave you <laughs> we love the way you serve us she had very peculiar habits <coughs> ladini mataji for example she would make a sweet for krishna from milk she did not have non stick cookware <laughs> she just had one pan metal pan so when she would boil milk the milk would stick to the vessel and she had this habit with a wooden spoon she would scrape all those uh, pieces of uh, the particles of milk that had got stuck to the pan and she would mix it she would mix it in that condensed milk that she was offering to krishna and when some devotees asked her why you scrape that milk and give krishna so she said jagannath likes it <laughs> jagannath likes that that woody smoky flavor in his in his condensed milk so she had these you know habits which externally they look unacceptable oh why would you scrape all that burnt milk and give jagannath so she said jagannath likes it because jagannath would talk to her she was in that in her own bhav her sweetness of her seva completely absorbed her devotion was so pure i will tell one more thing about her sadhana ladini mata ji would put jagannath balde subhadra to rest at 9 pm but she would not be satisfied with her sadhana so she would read prabhupada's books you know in a ghee lamp light there was no lights and because she should not fall asleep she would stand and read for at least an hour she would stand and read prabhupada's books and she didn't have all the books when chaitanya charitamrita came out in the 1970s oh she had such a longing to read chaitanya charitamrita but where will she get chaitanya charitamrita for from she didn't have any money so she wrote a letter to bbt she wrote a letter to bbt that if there is a damaged copy poor little ladini mata ji is writing a letter to bbt my dear friend sitting in bahulavan in new vrindavan all alone in that wooden shack she writes a letter to bbt that please if there is a damaged copy in the printing press that somehow got damaged of chaitanya charitamrita i beg you please please get to me please send it to me i don't have any money but i promise you i will read chaitanya charitamrita every day if you give me a copy i am dying to read chaitanya charitamrita i have this intense longing to read chaitanya charitamrita please 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 if there is a damaged copy please give me chaitanya charitamrita when the people at bbt read that letter seeing her utkantha seeing her great eagerness to read chaitanya charitamrita they wanted to send her a free copy but they, they didn't they had to follow the rules they had to account for each set of chaitanya charitamrita so a devotee found a little fold on the cover of one of the volumes of chaitanya charitamrita so oh, this is damaged <laughs> there is a little fold in the dust cover this is damaged so it qualified as damaged but it was undamaged so he sent that copy free of cost for ladini mata ji ladini mata ji's best friends were bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam whatever volumes were available and chaitanya charitamrita oh she would read them with such hunger with such hunger any free time she got okay her japa is over gayatri is over in the uh, uh, evening she makes a small fruit offering to krishna and what to do uh, krishna is eating i have to wait for 15 minutes 15 minutes she would read chaitanya charitamrita or she would read bhagavatam she would not waste a single moment sometimes there would be festival and she had to cook there was no time to even chant she would wake up at 2 o'clock and start preparing start cooking at 2 o'clock because so many offerings shapan mo had to be made for jagannath so went to chant 16 rounds this is what ladini mata ji did and she warns us please don't imitate ladini mata ji would sit down with a nail she hit she, she drilled a nail in the wooden wall of bahulavan and she hung her japa mala there 
without the bead bag just her japa mala she hung on the wall please listen carefully my dear friends she would sit and she would be kneading the dough hmm? or she would be stirring the sabji with the spoon waiting for it to cook it would take so much time to cook on the wooden stove firewood so when she would be kneading the dough she would be looking at the wall in front of her she would be looking at her japa mala and she is kneading the dough she is stirring the sweet rice or she is stirring the sabji with the wooden spatula she is looking at the wall and she is looking at the japa mala and she is chanting she looks at each bead of the japa mala her eyes don't leave her japa mala her hands are working she was so expert cook that she would she could cook without looking and she would look at the japa mala and chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare then she would look at the next bead hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare 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 krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare so while kneading the dough she would chant one round with her eyes start with her fingers <laughs> she would go from one bead to the next with her eyes one round then she would keep the dough aside she would on the counter on the sakshi mala she would pull, pull one bead down that one round is over then she would put the milk for boiling while stirring the sweet rice hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare she what to do there are only 24 hours in a day only 24 hours in a day she would sleep at 11 o'clock or sometimes even later and she would be up at 2 o'clock there was no time for afternoon nap also six offerings had to be made cooking had to be done wood had to be procured from the forest water had to be brought from 2 miles away from the river and she would look at the river as yamuna she was so much in that raja bhav she had never gone to india never been to india never seen vrindavan but she was absorbed in vrindavan this is bhakti my dear friends this is devotion and somebody gifted her a old broken tape recorder and she would beg devotees for a a cassette of shila prabhupad lectures and somebody would give her one cassette which had four or five lectures she would hear those lectures every day over and over and over and over again for months so each lecture she would hear hundreds of times for months until somebody would come and give oh prabhupad gave this series of lectures here is another cassette like that her collection would grow she knew all the lectures by heart she knew exactly where prabhupad coughs in this lecture what prabhupad is going to say when the lecture is going to end every she memorized those lectures because she had heard those lectures over and over again over the 18 years that she lived in new vrindavan ladini mata ji finished reading all the 12 cantos until 1988 she finished reading all the 12 cantos of shrimad bhagavatam seven times cover to cover she was so busy we are not busy but still we have not read ladini mata ji so busy but still she read it seven times shrimad bhagavatam After she got Chaitanya Charitamrit, she read Chaitanya Charitamrit five times, cover to cover, complete Chaitanya Charitamrit five times, and every Ekadashi she would read the full Bhagavad Gita, all the translations of seven hundred verses, not purports, just translations. She had this work. Every Ekadashi did it. Every Ekadashi she would read the full Bhagavad Gita. This was Ladini Mata Ji's devotion, my dear friends. She went through so many trials and tribulations. After her husband left, Ladini Mata Ji was Krishna had gifted Ladini Mata Ji with lot of beauty, both external beauty and internal beauty. Our meditation is her internal beauty, but some people were attracted to the external beauty, and she saw that she is living alone. Her husband has left her, so there was one devotee. who developed attraction for her and he was a very wealthy devotee this devotee was not working but his father was very wealthy and the father was um, a good friend of kirtananda maharaj and he was a big donor for the new vrindavan community my dear friends please listen to me i may take some names i may say some things my intention is not to criticize i am not trying to do vaishnav ninda i am i am just glorifying ladini mata ji some names may come 
and it may be portrayed in a negative light but i offer my obeisances to all these great souls i am simply describing the charitra of ladini mata ji while doing this if some names come up we dosh drishti we are not doing dosh drishti we are not fault finding we are simply glorifying ladini mata ji we are simply narrating history so this devotee he developed a liking for her her father was a big donor to new vrindavan so the leadership at new vrindavan decided it would make sense to get ladini mata ji married to this man because this man is this devotee is wild he is into intoxication and illicit sex if he marries a fixed up fired up devotee like ladini mata ji he will come more regulated and the father of this boy told the leadership in new vrindavan that get my son married to a nice devotee girl so that he becomes regulated because he is very uncontrolled a, a good vaishnavi will bring peace in his life will bring direction in his life so the leadership thought ladini mata ji is the best person to get this uh, prabhu i am happy because he is very wealthy so this mata ji thought that ladini mata ji is saying this because you know she has only two sarees which have become brown because of the mud of new vrindavan now she is married to a wealthy uh, prabhu whose father is very wealthy and the biggest donor for new vrindavan now she will be able to afford a nice sarees nice jewelry now she will move out she will live in the apartment with her husband and she will have all luxuries and comforts but then ladini mata ji said no 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 i don't care about all those things i am not leaving bahulavan i am not leaving my jagannath but the reason i am happy is because jagannath really needs some new jewelry jagannath really i have a great desire to gift him silk clothes i want to sew silk clothes for him but she was very good at sewing she would make the dresses for jagannath bolle subhadra so she said my husband if he gives me some money i will i will buy some paraphernalia for my jagannath so i can make nice clothes nice jewelry for him jagannath needs a new conch she was thinking like this so everything she was thinking in relationship to her jagannath her seva to jagannath bolle subhadra nothing for herself so this was ladini mata ji and the husband was always complaining that you are always serving jagannath as if he is your husband i have no importance in your life and one day he got angry and she was she used to serve him very humbly she would never talk back to him she would even take care of him in the evening she would even spend time with him that i will sit so let's sit together let's read prabhupad's books together but one day he got so angry <clears throat> he was intoxicated he was having affair with another lady and she served him hot lunch there was rice and there was hot dal he was so upset with her that she is not serving him properly he took that hot dal and threw it in ladini mata ji's face and ladini mata ji was petrified she was so scared at this violent outburst <laughs> then the devotees the leadership decided that this is not right you know you should not one should not beat one's wife like this he was very abusive this is just one example and finally <clears throat> that has she, she prayed to jagannath Ladini Mata took shelter of Jagannath. Said Jagannath, I want to serve you. Please protect me. I want to serve you. <coughs> so finally, this husband, he his affair with another lady was revealed, and he left Ladini Mata ji, and he went away. The second husband also left her, and went away. And Ladini Mata ji continued, continued serving Jagannath in Bahula Van, New Vrindavan Van. Eighteen years she served. Then in the nineteen eighties. there were many changes in new vrindavan the leadership in new vrindavan said that shila prabhupad really wanted inter faith preaching god is one so let us preach to the westerners the locals so they don't like us wearing dhoti kurta sari so everybody should wear robes so ladini mata ji was forced to give up her brown muddy sari that she had worn for 18 years and she was told to wear robes she was told to chant silently you cannot chant loudly nobody should hear this hari krishna because they will be scared they will be they will not like it it will be unpalatable for them and don't use any sanskrit or bengali no bengali bhajans no sanskrit um, prayers everything should be in english and take the name of god and even the initiations that happened in new vrindavan 
their names were all english names pure bliss prabhu holy name prabhu devotional service mata ji these were the names that were being given so so many changes were brought and it broke the heart of ladini mata ji because she was completely in vraja bhav that i am a servant of shrimati radharani i have to keep jagannath in vrindavan radharani has pulled him from kurukshetra i have to serve him so nicely that he never leaves vrindavan that was her bhav so she would do all simple uh, bhakti she would dress him up like a cowherd boy not like dwarkadish she would she would offer him she would call it flannel she would offer him cotton clothes sometimes on festival she would give him silk also but she had a simple bhakti praja bhav and to wear robes to chant in your mind not to chant loudly to not chant sanskrit bengali prayers uh, to not wear sari not wear dhoti kurta not wear vaishnav tilak it was heart breaking for her and she would cry she would pray to prabhupada prabhupada had left this planet in 1977 this is 1980s all these uh, non bona fide changes were brought about after prabhupada left and everybody said that this is a revelation that is happening to the leadership the krishna and guru is revealing to them that's why they are bringing all these changes and indeed many western people came they came and they were attracted they would come and see the shila prabhupada's palace so money was coming in congregation was growing but it was not the pure bhakti that shila prabhupada had given ladini mata ji was thirsty for pure bhakti she wanted those loud kirtans she wanted prabhupada's books to be distributed she wanted to chant samsara dava she wanted to chant gaura aarti but she was not allowed it was breaking her heart and she would cry she would cry and she would pray to jagannath and one time in 1987 his holiness bhakti tirth maharaj came to new vrinda and gave a sunday feast he was coming from africa he was coming from nigeria and bhakti tirth maharaj's life we can discuss some other day he was such a powerful empowered soldier of shila prabhupad very very strong he was chanted at least 40 rounds every day at least read prabhupad's books for 2 hours and never slept more than 3 hours at night he was absorbed in book distribution sankirtan preaching giving lectures 24 hours a day bhakti tirth maharaj he came and he spoke about pure bhakti in 1987 he spoke about pure bhakti and ladini mata was crying 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 she said this is what i long for this is what prabhupad came to give this is what i am thirsty for but she was too scared to speak up against the management because she didn't want to commit vaishnava aparad but when she heard this from bhakti tirth maharaj oh she was so happy this is what i have been thirsting for bhakti tirth maharaj was wearing the robes of sanyasi he was carrying a sanyas that he was very very authentic he didn't change anything and he spoke boldly and powerfully and ladini mata ji was so charmed she said this is what i want this is a true representative of shila prabhupad i want to work under him i don't want to work under this management but i'm too scared to speak i don't want to offend anybody i don't want to offend anyone at that time in 1987 his holiness radharat swami maharaj came to new vrindavan from bombay and maharaj was just starting a new congregation in bombay so he came to new vrindavan and because radhanath maharaj also had stayed in new vrindavan for many years he was on another mountain and ladini mata ji was on bahulavan serving jagannath mandir subhadra they knew each other but they had not met so much but they knew because they were in new vrindavan on sunday feasts they would meet so ladini mata ji went to radhanath maharaj and she poured her heart out she said maharaj in the last few years things have changed so much in new vrindavan i am not able to worship my jagannath in the mood that i have been worshiping him for 17 years things have changed and every evening in the privacy of this shack this wooden shack of bahulavan where i read the pages of chaitanya charitamrit 
when i read what mahaprabhu used to wear when i read what the devotees would wear when i read how they would do sankirtan when i read how they would dance in loud sankirtan when i would hear how they would chant japa intensely when i read chaitanya charitamrit it breaks my heart to see how things have changed in new vrindavan even shila prabhupad's vigraha they don't make shila prabhupad wear his sanyas clothes prabhupad is wearing a british hat and british coat and flowing robes what is all this it breaks my heart maharaj it breaks my heart to see all these changes i am really inspired by bhakti tirtha maharaj do you think i could go and join him so radhanath maharaj said yes by all means bhakti tirtha maharaj is very empowered he is a very able leader you should work under him so you write a letter to bhakti tirtha maharaj so ladin pata he wrote a letter to bhakti tirtha maharaj and maharaj after so many years of living in vrindavan you are the one person i have seen who is representing shila prabhupad boldly and purely you have not changed anything please accept me as your servant and take me with you to preach and <coughs> radhanath maharaj told ladini mata ji that i am going back to bombay and we are going to vrindavan for yatra so if you want you can join our yatra so ladini mata ji took permission from kirtananda maharaj that i have been practicing krishna consciousness for 18 years and uh, 19 years this was uh, 18 years so she joined in 1969 and this is 1988 she said i have been practicing for 18 years 19 years i have never been to india <laughs> i have only read in bhagavatam i have only read in chaitanya charitam we, we heard how she had read the entire bhagavatam seven times and entire chaitanya charitam read five times uh, and every ek adhyay she would read the full bhagavad gita english translations so i have only read but i have never visited this this pavan bhumi of bharat radhanath swami maharaj is taking a pilgrimage to vrindavan this kartik can i go so in the kartik yatra of 1987 after getting permission from kirtananda maharaj ladini mata ji for the first time she left new vrindavan she came to new vrindavan in 1970 and in 1987 for the first time after 18 years she left new vrindavan her bhakti was so pure that she started with one set of deities of jagannath balde subhadra and devotees would come and give her their jagannath balde subhadra that you know how to worship jagannath can you please take care of my small jagannath balde subhadra and they would give her jagannath deities when ladini mata ji left bahulavan the jagannath temple in 1987 she had 18 sets of jagannath balde subhadra deities she was attracting jagannath like anything and she was addressing 18 jagannath deities every day she was cooking six offerings single handedly with dried forest wood without any flowing water electricity or plumbing for 18 years she was serving jagannath like this in the simple mood so after 18 years of intense bhajan chanting every day from 2:30 am to 4 am she left bahulava and for the very first time in her life she came to mumbai she came to mumbai at that time even radha gopina temple was not existing this is 1987 kartik so she lived in the house of shrinath ji prabhu and her associates were maithili priya mata ji the good wife of shrinath ji prabhu and vishakha priya mata ji the wife of dwarkadish prabhu so let us hear what shrinath ji prabhu and vishakha priya mata ji have to say about ladini mata ji there are so many things that happened in new vrindavan can you believe ladini mata ji was given sanyas <laughs> and her name was rishikesh maharaj <laughs> so all these changes were brought about females were given a sanyas they were given male names so all these things were happening which prabhupad never sanctioned none of our acharyas sanctioned so then with the blessings of uh, radhanath maharaj and bhakti tirth maharaj she went back to the name that prabhupad had given her from being rishikesh swami ladini mata ji went back to become ladini mata ji and she she wrote a letter to kirtananda maharaj she said i'm giving up this false sanyas that was awarded to me i will serve the new vrindavan community from a distance i cannot reconcile to all the changes that you have brought about i am not criticizing but i just cannot uh, adjust to them so i will serve new vrindavan community from a distance and i want to travel and preach so she came to bombay for the first time 
and every day there will be morning program at Shivaji Prabhu's house. And uh, there are so many pastimes that we are running out of time. I don't even know what the time is, but I, I, I am expecting we must have run out of time. So I will not. We will leave many pastimes that happened in Mumbai. But uh, so so she she was a source of great inspiration to Shivaji Prabhu and Vishakha Priya Mataji and all the devotees of Chaupati. So this is what some devotees said about her. They said, we have never seen anyone chant Japa with such intensity, with such devotion. She would be such concentrated attention. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. Each mantra she would chant as if that is her last mantra. And Shridharji Prabhu says, I don't know how many rounds she chanted. See, when she was in Bahula one, in New Vrinda one, she had no time. So she would chant 16 rounds in one and a half hours from 2.30 a.m. to 4 a.m. And then few extra rounds in between. She would chant Gayatri three times and she would read Prabhupada's books and hear Prabhupada's lectures. She didn't have so much time for extra rounds. But after she left Jagannath Baldev Subhadra's direct service as their pujari, now she had a little bit more time. So it's not like she slackened or she relaxed. She increased the quality and quantity of her japa. Shridharji Prabhu said, I don't know how many rounds she chanted, but I know it was way, way, these are exact words, way, way more than 16. She would chant a lot of rounds every day. And she would read Prabhupada's books with such, such hunger, such thirst. Especially her favorite scripture was Chaitanya Charitamrita. When she left New Vrindavan, she had read it five times. And in the next, the three more years that she lived on this planet, she read it more, many more times. She would read Chaitanya Charitamrita for hours every day. It was her favorite book, Chaitanya Charitamrita. She would read, she would read, she would read. She would go with Vishava Priya Mataji to her school and preach in the Christian school. She would go to the girls' common room and preach there. And so many devotees, so many girls gave up meat eating decided chanting Hare Krishna by her purity. Very, very empowered. And she was especially good with children. There is one incident that happened in New Vrindavan. It shows the heart of Ladini Mataji. There was a Gurukul that was started in New Vrindavan. And again, there was a lot of mismanagement that happened. One day, a Gurukul teacher was beating, a female teacher was beating a female student. And Ladini Mataji heard that somewhere, that this, the teacher was actually sitting on the child and beating, and the child was uh, was was banging her feet on the ground and calling out Krishna, 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 and Ladini Madhuri screamed loudly, "Who is beating?" And she ran to where that abuse was taking place. And as soon as that female teacher saw Ladini Madhuri come running, she just got up, you know, stopped beating that girl and just walked away. So in this way, Ladini Madhuri saved, rescued that little girl, and Ladini Madhuri went and embraced that little girl. But Ladini Mataji did not say anything about that teacher to that girl. Ladini Mataji just embraced that girl and said, I am so proud of you. I am so proud of you, my child. When you are in danger, like a true Brajvasi, you called out Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. I am so proud of you, my dear. May Jagannath always protect you. Ladini Mataji just could not criticize anybody. She did not say that what the teacher was doing was wrong. Let me do this. Let me do that. She is you know, not a good devotee. She just couldn't do it. It was just not her nature. She would stand up. She would protect. She would fight. But she couldn't say anything bad about anybody. And she had read this in Chaitanya Charitamrit about Raghunath Bhatta Goswami. How Krishnadas Kavira Goswami describes that Vaishnava, Ninda or you know, whatever devotee you are, he would never criticize and he would never hear. It would never enter his calm. It would never enter his ears. Criticism of any devotee. So Ladini Mataji was like that. And for the first time she went to Vrindavan Dham with the 1987 Kartik Yatra of Srila Radhanath Maharaj with the Chaupati congregation, Radha Bhutinath congregation. So she went with all these devotees. There were not many devotees, just around 50 of them. They went to Vrindavan. And for two weeks they were in Vrindavan. First time Ladini Mataji, after 18 years, 19 years of consciousness, she is in Vrindavan Dham. She went to Radha Kund. She went to Shamakund. She went on Govardhan Parikrama. She went to Barsana. And Barsana was the most favorite of her, all her places. She would dance and sing with such ecstasy in Barsana, in Vrindavan. Radhanath Maharaj says that one day all the Matajis were sitting 
and you know they were being served prasadam and ladini mata ji was served some khichdi in, in a plate made of leaves and the devotees mata ji noticed that before starting to eat ladini mata ji took some dust of barsana a generous amount of dust of barsana and sprinkled it on her khichdi <laughs> and started eating and she would do this every day in vrindavan she would not accept prasad without putting the dust of vrindavan in her plate she was she had such nishtha such dham nishtha she loved vrindavan so much and she was in complete bliss for those two weeks complete bliss and <clears throat> after that she came back to after spending few months she spent few months with the congregation in bombay she came back to uh, new vrindavan she came back to new vrindavan and vishaka priya mata ji writes that i understood the the meaning of the of the word ecstasy after meeting ladini mata ji what is ecstasy of devotion i understood this word ecstasy after seeing ladini mata ji she had such ecstatic bhav of devotional service such ecstatic ecstatic method of worshiping and she was so empowered i will give two examples one time ladini mata ji was all alone in that wooden shack in bahulavan please listen to this very carefully my dear friends please listen to this very carefully ladini mata ji is all alone in bahulavan serving jagannath and she wanted to make a evening offering of fruits to jagannath but all she had was one lemon nimbu one lemon so ladini mata ji cut the lemon into half she squeezed it into water water that she had brought from walking 2 miles to that river the bucket and bring it back she put it in a glass squeeze the lemon stir some sugar actually she didn't even have sugar devotees would go to the new vrindavan forest and they would get honey from bee hives so she had some honey as a sweetener she put honey limbu and water and she offered this lemonade to jagannath baldev subhadra as the evening fruit offering but she had no other fruit just a lemon and the remaining half lemon she squeezed she put lot of honey on it and she offered the pulp of the remaining half of lemon with honey on it to jagannath bolle subhadra and she was sitting with her eyes closed she was praying to jagannath bolle subhadra to eat that honey sprinkled pulp of half lemon and the glass of lemonade made from the other half of the lemon that she had that's all she had and she was praying and ladini mata ji says that i heard the door of bahulavan open and close many times the door would open someone would come put something and go again someone would come put something and go again someone would come put something as go all the while when she is chanting the offering mantras nama om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale shri mate bhakti vedanta swami niti namine so chanting all these three mantras offering with love and the door would open she would hear some so- sound door would close open close during the chanting of the mantras this happened four five times and afterwards she offered obeisances after chanting the mantras and she again looked at the deities praying for them to accept the offering and as when she opened her eyes she saw a basket of apples she saw a basket of oranges she saw a basket of bananas all these fruits they were just very beautifully decorated on the altar in that small wooden shack in bahulavan it was kept like that so she, her faith is that krishna himself arranged for the fruits to be sent oh i i messed up the whole past time i'm so sorry actually when ladini mata ji was praying to krishna to eat that lemon and that lemonade she was not satisfied that i am offering krishna just a lemonade and a lemon that's all so she did manas puja and in her mind she brought apples she brought oranges in her mind she brought bananas she brought mangoes and she was offering jagannath bolle sudha in her mind and then she was hearing that sound also of the door opening and closing and when she opened her eyes she saw that indeed those fruits were actually kept in front of the altar as an offering this was the power of ladini mata ji's bhajan this was the power of her devotion another time she was told when this was when she was a very new devotee in uh, in uh, cleveland ohio the rent no she was in chicago she went to chicago also for some time she was in chicago and the rent was 400 dollars a month and the leader told her that you go and do some harinam sankirtan and distribute prabhupad's books and get some lakshmi we have to pay the rent there is no money we have to pay 400 dollars tomorrow 
and Ladhir Mathur was praying to Srila Prabhupada. This was even before she came to New Vrindavan. This was 1969. She was praying to Krishna somehow to provide for the temple, Prabhupada's temple. And as she was praying, a very tall person dressed in suit came and gave her an envelope and said, this is a donation for your temple, but don't tell anybody. I came and gave it to you. And he just turned and walked away. So Ladhi Madhuri opened the envelope. It was not sealed. She opened the envelope and there were $400 in that envelope. And she looked up and this man was gone. She could not see him again. Again, Ladhi Madhuri had faith that Krishna sent his, his dhut to provide money. And similarly in Bahulavan, she had faith that Krishna sent his representative with those fruits. This was the purity of Ladini Mataji. So from India, after visiting India, after visiting Vrindavan for the first time in 1987, Karthik, she came back to New Vrindavan. And Bhakti Tirth Maharaj did not respond to her letter. Remember she had written a letter to Bhakti Tirth Maharaj before going to India that I want to join you, serve under you in, in Africa. Bhakti Tirth Maharaj used to get so many such letters that I want to come and join you, but you know nobody would follow up on their promise. So Bhakti Dev Maharaj read that letter, but he didn't respond because he thought, you know, she's, this is just another letter that is coming. But then Radhir Mataji came and she saw that there is no response yet from Bhakti Dev Maharaj. So again, she told Radhanath Maharaj that I want to really join Bhakti Dev Maharaj. How can I join him? So Radhanath Maharaj said, Bhakti Dev Maharaj is in Washington, D.C. Let us go and meet him. So in two separate cars, they drove from New Vrindavan to Washington, D.C. And there, Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj had established his Institute for Applied Spiritual Technology, very close to the White House. He had rented a place and he was, he had started that institute to preach. So they went and they went to the office of Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj. And Ladi Ramadhi was crying and she was saying, Maharaj, please accept me as your servant. I want to preach. So Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj asked, why you want to preach? And then Ladi Mataji revealed to Radhanath Maharaj and Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj why she wanted to preach. Ladini Mataji said, for the last few years, Nityananda Prabhu has been coming in my dreams. Ever since I started reading about him in Chaitanya Sharita, with Gaurnita, I come in my dreams. And they do so many things. But last few years, Nityananda Prabhu has been specifically requesting me that you have perfected your bhajan. She's just quoting Nityananda Prabhu. Ladini Mataji would say, you have perfected your bhajan. You have now become a fully matured devotee. I want you to go and preach. And she would wake up in the morning at 2 o'clock and she would decide, yes, Nityananda Prabhu has told me I must go and preach. So I will go and preach. But the next night, Balaram would come in her dreams. Jagannath Baldev Subhadra. So Baladev, Balaram would come in her dream and tell her, I am so happy with, your, with the way you are serving me and my brother and my sister. Please never stop. All your life you should stay here in New Vrindavan, in Bahulavan and worship me. I love the way you are worshipping me. That I am not satisfied accepting your service in one form as Balram. That's why I have expanded into 18 forms and I am accepting your service with, with, with 18 sets of eyes, 18 sets of mouths, 18 sets of hands. I love your service so much. So never leave me and go. No second night. Then third night, again Nityananda Prabhu would come in her dream and would say, what are you sitting there doing Pujari? Seva, anybody can be a pujari. I want you to go and preach. The whole world is a field for preaching. There are so many souls who are suffering. Go and rescue them. I empower you. And third day she would wake up and say, yes, yes, yes. Nityananda Prabhu saying, I must go. And fourth night, again Balramji would come in her dream and chastise her. You are thinking of leaving me and going? Have you ever thought who is going to take care of me? When you were going to be kicked away from here and they were sending a brahmachari to come and serve us, you prayed to me. But please never remove me from your service. Always stay with me. At that time, I made a vow that I will always stay with my Ladini. And I will always accept service from her. I will never leave her. I made a promise because you prayed. And now you want to leave me because this Audhut is telling you to leave? Balram used to chastise her. And she would wake up the fourth day and say, no, 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 I will never leave. I will never leave. I will continue with my say for Jagannath. My dear friends, in this way, she, she narrated because Bhakti Dhirita Maharaj asked her, why do you want to go? Bhakti Dhirita Maharaj wanted to make sure that she really means it. She really wants to come to Africa because living in Africa is not easy. And because Bhakti Dhirita Maharaj asked, she told the truth of what happened. 
She said, Nityananda Prabhu and Balram Ji are coming in my dreams. And Nityananda Prabhu, who is not different from Balram, is telling me to go and preach. And Balram, who is not different from Nityananda Prabhu, is telling me to stay. So I was in a dharma sankat. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know who to listen. But in one dream, Nityananda Prabhu told me that I have won the argument. Now Balram Ji will not tell you to stay anymore. I have won the argument. You listen to me. You go and you preach. And after that, Balram Ji never came in her dream to tell her to, to not go, not leave. So Ladini Mataji, with tears in her eyes, she understood that Nityananda Prabhu has won the argument. <laughs> after all, this is his age. This is not Bapar Yug. This is Kali Yug. So yes, he has won. He has the home ground advantage. <laughs> he has won. So I will leave my Baladev. I will leave my Jagannath. I will leave my Subhadra. And I will go. But Ladini Mataji did not want to go without carrying the shoes of Baladev with her. So Ladini Mataji took the extraordinary step. Before leaving New Vrindavan for the last time in 1988, Ladini Mataji took with her the Paduka, the shoes of Balramji from the altar. And holding them to her chest, she had come to the office of Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj in Washington, D.C. And she showed Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj, see Maharaj, Balramji has given me permission to go. And Nityananda Prabhu has ordered me to go and preach. So I have decided to carry Balramji's Padukas with me. And Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj told her, there is a consulate right here in Washington, D.C. Immediately go there and apply for African uh, visa. And I will take you to a doctor, a disciple of mine. He's my student. He's a doctor. Go to him and start taking your vaccines. We are going to Africa. So in 1988, Ladini Mataji, holding the, the shoes of Balramji, who she had served for 18 years all alone, in Bahulavan in New Vrindavan. This Ladini Mataji used to very lovingly chant 16 rounds every day from 2.30 a.m. to 4 a.m. Who had offered six Ardis every single day, seven days a week, 365 days a year for 18 years to Jagannath Bhagavad Subhadra. Who had cooked three full meals, total six offerings for Jagannath Bhagavad Subhadra every day. Who used to stitch clothes for Jagannath. Baldev Subhadra, who used to make jewelry for them, all the while herself wearing just those two saris, which had become brown from the mud of New Vrindavan because she had no soap. This Ladini Mataji took the shoes of Balramji as her only possession and she left for Africa. Before she left for Africa, a devotee gifted her very beautiful Gaurnitai deities made of marble. And she named them Nitai Gaura. And she would worship them. And she would hold the Padukas of Balramji close to her heart. And after that day, Ladini Mataji, every night, she always slept on the floor. But she decided to use a pillow from that day. All her life, she did not use any pillow. But now, Ladini Mataji decided, I will use a pillow for the rest of my life. In 1988, she decided. And her pillow every night for the three hours that she slept from 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. Her pillow were the beautiful shoes, wooden shoes of Balramji. She would put her head, all day she would preach and at night she would come back and she would cry in separation from her Jagannath Baldev Subhadra in Bahulavan. And she would put her head on the lotus shoes of Balram and she would sleep every night on the shoes of Balram for the rest of her life. This was Ladini Mataji. She came to Africa with Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj. She came to Nigeria first. Oh, what a sensation she became in Nigeria. Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj is African-American. Ladini Mataji was the only white-skinned devotee. And Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj always considered her to be his senior mother. Bhakti Dirk Maharaj always considered Ladini Mataji to be more advanced than him. And Ladini Mataji became such a sensation. She gave a series of 
lectures on television because this news reporters in 1988 1989 1990 they would come and interview her for three years she lived in africa 1988 1989 and 1990 she traveled to nigeria she traveled to south africa she traveled to lagos she traveled to sierra leone she traveled to liberia and she traveled to sudan she traveled to all these countries where which were all christian or islamic countries countries where there was political unrest and she preached and she preached with such compassion she loved children she didn't have any children of her own but she loved children she would preach to them she would talk to them and the children just did whatever she would tell them something very wonderful happened in africa my dear friends please listen carefully very wonderful happened ladini mata ji in the three years that she lived in africa she traveled to all these countries and interestingly every temple every iskon temple that she went to they always had jagannath baldev subhadra as one of the deities there they had gornita some temples had gornita radha krishna but every temple had jagannath baldev subhadra interestingly for her so she saw that the jagannath baldev subhadra deities in the jagannath in the african iskon temples either the paint had come off nobody had repainted them or the painting was wrong they had wrong chinna wrong markings on them it broke the heart of ladini mata ji so every time she would go to iskon temple she would say let's have snan yatra and she would take the jagannath baldev subhadra and she would bathe them with milk and yogurt and water and then she would say now jagannath baldev subhadra are sick for 9 days now after snan yatra they will stay with me nobody can take darshan for 9 days we just pray in separation vipralamba and you chant and i will i will nurse them back to health and she would take them to a secluded place and she would cook special offerings once yamuna mata ji asked ladini mata ji what do you do to improve jagannath's health after snan yatra when he falls sick ladini mata ji whispered in the ears of yamuna mata ji i give him lot of sugar he likes to eat sweet dishes so i make lots of sweet meats for him So like that, she would cook with great love for those nine days, and she would repaint. In the three years, Ladini Mata Ji repainted thirty-two Jagannath Baldev Subhadra deities in Africa. Thirty-two sets of deities. She would go, she would hold a snan yatra, and she would repaint them. Now I know what I'm. She would repaint them, and then she would have Rath Yatra with Jagannath Baldev Subhadra. She would cook fifty-six offerings for them, chappan bhog that day. So this was Ladini Mata Ji. She transformed Africa. hundreds and thousands of devotees were inspired by her example she gave numerous numerous television interview each interview 45 to minutes to 1 hour and she would speak pure krishna consciousness she would speak right out of shrila prabhupada's books no compromise no sugar coating she would speak as it is and she would speak with such love such compassion purity is the force prabhupada said and ladini mata ji had no scarcity of that oh she was so pure she would speak on television she became a public figure devotees would come to her for initiation ladini mata ji please give us shelter please give us diksha but she would refer all of them to bhakti tirth maharaj she would say he is a sadguru he will he will guide you go to bhakti tirth maharaj and take initiation from him in this way she inspired hundreds and thousands of devotees our ladini mata ji and finally in the year 1990 ladini mata ji went to liberia and she, the devotees she saw everywhere she went ladini mata ji saw that devotees were completely spiritually weak because no no preachers would come to africa there was preaching going on in america north america preaching going on in europe preaching going on in india big big temples but nobody would come to africa who wants to go to africa and get malaria or dengue or so many diseases it is described there were no vegetables in sudan there were no vegetables in liberia there was no ro- roti chapati nothing there were no cows in liberia my dear friends there was no milk there was no ghee all the lamp offerings were with oil crude oil there were no vegetables there was only rice so ladini mata ji would take rice put some oil on it and offer it to jagannath there were no tulsi plants 
in Liberia. Nadiri Mataji, all she had was her Nitai Gaura and Jagannath Padmaswara. And she was preaching and she was inspiring devotees. She was preaching to men and women because there was nobody else to preach. She would do everything. She was their mother. She was their Shiksha Guru. She was their source of inspiration. There was some uh, particular plant that grew in Africa, which was supposed to be like spinach, but it was very coarse leaves, green leaves, no taste, bitter, did not taste like spinach. It did not even come to the taste of, come close to the taste of spinach. All they had there was rice and a soup. Basically, these green leaves boiled in that water because these leaves are edible. There was the only edible plant that grew in that part of because the whole diet was meat. Everything was meat for those people of Africa. She went to Sudan. She went to Liberia. This is what she ate for three years, my dear friends. And Nirjal every Ekadashi. She never compromised on her bhajan. She never failed to carry Prabhupada's books with her. She continued and she inspired devotees, strengthened them. When she was doing all this, we are coming to the close of our Katha, my dear friends. Please, please have patience. Please listen carefully. At this point, when Ladini Mataji was doing all this, a civil war broke out in Liberia. There were seven rival landlord gangs which wanted to overthrow the government and take power. Liberia is a country in Northwest Africa where the Ebola virus outbreak took place four or five years ago. You must have heard. Syria, Leon and Liberia. That is where Ladini Mataji was there. Very rural Africa. Civil war broke out. There was utter lawlessness. And Ladini Mataji was so famous that she knew the president of the country. So the rebels thought this woman, these Iskon devotees are very close to the government that we are trying to overthrow. So they came to the temple. One particular person called Prince Johnson. He was a local native African. Very powerful, ruthless leader. He wanted to kill everybody who was opposed. So he came to kill. But when he saw Adini Mataji, he was completely mesmerized by her simplicity, her devotion. Adini Mataji was 41 years old now. He was born in 1949. This is 1990. He was 41 years old. She preached to Prince Johnson, the leader of the rebels, the leader of one of the rebel gangs. She preached to him about non-violence. She preached to him about universal love. And she preached to him about seva, service. Keeping God in the center. Prince Johnson was so moved that he accepted a copy of Bhagavad Gita as it is from Ladini Mataji. He accepted spiritual guidance from Ladini Mataji. And he said, I will always be favorable to his God. And he left. He had come to kill them and he left. Prince Johnson. Then what happened was these rebel gangs, um, WHO and Red Cross, they were sending food supplies because the population of Liberia was starving. It's, it's a port country. It's a country on the seashore. So all the ports were taken over by the rebels. So all the supply of food, the food chain was cut off. People were starving. Only the soldiers had access to food. So people were dying of starvation. There was no food to make offerings. So Ladini Mataji went to Prince Johnson, who controlled one of the ports of Monrovia. And this happened in Monrovia, the capital of Liberia. It's a coastal city. He went to Prince Johnson. And she told, he told, she told, Ladini Mataji told Prince Johnson that the people are starving. Hmm? You'll get a lot of sins if you do this. Please give me all the supply of food, all the grains, all the supply that you are getting from Red Cross. I will cook. I will cook. I will I will distribute. We will do food distribution. Prasadam distribution we'll do. And you will get all the suprati. You will get all the power. Hmm? So Prince Johnson accepted the proposal because he accepted the authority of Ladini Mataji. And he gave all the food that he was holding to Ladini Mataji. And Ladini Mataji happily cooked sumptuous prasad for Jagannath, Nitai Gaura, and she did mass distribution of Krishna Prasad in Africa. Oh, devotees had never tasted such tasty Prasad, such wonderful vegetarian food, sanctified food. And she was happy that everybody is getting nice Prasad. By this time, 
Prince Johnson defeated the other six rival gangs. He overthrew the existing government and became the military leader of Liberia. Prince Johnson. Now, one devotee, in his immaturity, he made a fatal mistake. He wrote a letter to Prince Johnson from the Iskon Temple of Mandrovia, and Ladini Mathari had no idea about this. He wrote a letter to Prince Johnson saying, You are a fool. You have killed so many innocent people. You will have to pay and suffer in hell for this. And he quoted from Bhagavatam that if you kill unnecessarily, this is the punishment. You have to go to this hell and suffer like this. This is called wrong preaching. There is a there is a saying that if you give a good instruction to an envious person, to, the, to a fool, even after receiving a good instruction, the fool will only get angry at you. So that's what happened to Prince Johnson. When this Iskand devotee wrote that letter, he thought it is coming from the uh, you know from Iskon temple, and he blamed it on Ladini Mataji. Although Ladini Mataji had nothing to do with that letter, and he got so angry after reading that letter that he said, "Tomorrow I will kill all the Iskon devotees in Mandrovia, and I will plunder and loot the Iskon temple in Mandrovia." Next day morning, Ladini Mataji got up as as usual at 2 a.m. She did her japa before Mangal Arti, as was her lifelong. Um, rule, the lifelong practice. She did the Mangal Arti. She did the Narasimha Arti, praying for protection. She mentally worshipped Tulsi Maharani. They didn't have a Tulsi plant in that temple. And they had their, uh, after Japa, they had their Bhagavatam class. Then she had, she did more Japa with the devotees. Then they had the Bhagavatam class. And in the morning hours, just after Bhagavatam class, in the year 1919, it was Indira Ekadashi on that day. On the auspicious tithi of Indira Ekadashi, Prince Johnson armed with so many soldiers who were military trained, holding AK-47 assault rifles, stormed the Monrovia Iskon temple. At gunpoint, they told Ladini Mataji and all the devotees to come outside. They had a jeep waiting outside. There were nine devotees. There were seven Brahmacharis and two Matajis. Ladini Mataji and there was another Mataji who Ladini Mataji who was under the care of Ladini Mataji. Uh, her name was Yoga Maya Mataji. And then there were seven Brahmacharis. So all of them were brought outside, they were made to stand in a straight line and they were told, come on, climb into that jeep at gunpoint. And obediently, they all went into the jeep and just few yards from the temple was a river. And because the river was very close to the ocean, there was some sand also on the banks of the river. Because the river went and met the ocean, just a few miles ahead. So a short drive, just a few uh, just a minute's drive from the temple, Prince Johnson took these nine devotees to the bank of that river. And he made them stand in a straight line on the bank of that river. And he said, I am going to kill. I am going to kill. I got this letter from one of you. And I'm going to destroy and finish off all of you. You are a threat to me. But I will not kill Ladini Mataji. I will not kill Yoga Maya Mataji. I will not kill these two ladies. I will only kill the men. And he took out his pistol. He had a special pistol, gold plated, specially made for him. He took out his pistol and he said, I will fire the first shot. And then my 12, there were a dozen shoulder, uh, soldiers holding assault rifles, machine guns. Then they will do the rest. And all the guns were pointed at the men, the seven men. And Ladini Mataji and Yoga Maya Mataji were made to stand on the side. They said, you can go back to the temple. It was just a short walk. Then you go back to the temple. But we are going to kill these people. Prince Johnson made up his mind. And he pointed his pistol to fire the first shot. And Ladini Mataji was chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra throughout the ordeal. And she told Prince Johnson that 
don't kill the devotees of Krishna. Don't kill the devotees of Krishna. But Prince Johnson would not listen. And Ladini Mataji said, I cannot stand and watch a Vaishnava Aparad being committed. Hanti nindati vai dveshti Vaishnavana bhinandati Krudyate yatino harsham darshane patanani shat The first Vaishnava Aparad Hanti to physically assault a devotee, to kill a devotee. Prince Johnson was committing a Vaishnava Aparad to kill seven Brahmacharis. Ladiri Mataji said, I am not going to stand and watch him do this. She chanted loudly, Hare Krishna Mahamantra. She begged Prince Johnson not to commit this Vaishnava Aparad, not to commit this violence. But Prince Johnson would not listen. Ladiri Mataji, who was just a simple little 41 year old Mataji, so austere, would eat two meals a day. Hmm? She, with all the strength she could muster up, with all the strength at her disposal, she lunged at Prince Johnson, who was the president, the military leader of the whole country of Liberia. She lunged, she jumped, pounced upon Prince Johnson. As soon as she did this, all the devotees got scared and they loudly started chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. They knew that Ladini Mathur was going to be killed. They knew that they are going to be killed. Loudly they started a Sankirtan. All the devotees. <coughs> and Ladini Mataji grabbed the pistol from the hand of Prince Johnson, who was taken by surprise. That this Mataji was supposed to go back to the temple. I told her to go. And she's attacking me. And Ladini Mataji screamed out at the top of her lungs. You cannot kill the devotees of Krishna. Better you kill me. I would rather die than to stand and watch the devotees of Krishna being killed. I will not let you kill the devotees of Krishna. That was the last word she said. Krishna. Somehow Prince Johnson grabbed the gun back from Ladini Mataji's female grip. And the 12 soldiers also pointed all their machine guns at Ladini Mataji's transcendental form. And <laughs> Prince Johnson fired the first shots straight at Ladini Mataji. <coughs> As Ladini Mataji was struggling, fighting to prevent a Vaishnava Aparad from being committed. And her body was riddled with bullets. <coughs> and she left her body. And then all the seven <coughs> Brahmacharis were killed. And Yoga Maya Mataji, she came to Prince Johnson and said, please accept me as your wife. So Yoga Maya Mataji married Prince Johnson and she was saved, her life was saved. But Ladini Mataji became a martyr. She gave up her life for the sake of Vaishnavas, for the sake of devotees. Shri Radharat Maharaj says that Ladini Mataji <coughs> went back to the spiritual world. And Ladini Mataji was completely protected by Krishna. Avasya Rakshive Krishna. Eh? How was she protected by Krishna? She was killed. Prahlad was protected. Dhruva Maharaj was protected. Ladini Mataji, how come you are saying she was protected? She was killed. She could have left her body in Vrindavan Dham. She could have left her body in New Vrindavan. She would have left her body in the temple, but she was brought outside the temple, dragged outside the temple. The temple is Vrindavan. Temple is Vaikuntha. Not this. She was killed under a bridge on the banks of a river in an unholy country of Liberia. How come she went back to home, back to God? Sri Radharat Maharaj says 
that few days before Ladini Mataji was murdered, Ladini Mataji wrote a letter to Radharat Maharaj in which she said, somehow Krishna has brought me in this country. Somehow Krishna has brought me. Somehow Srila Prabhupada has brought me to Africa. And now he has brought me to Liberia where a civil war has broken out. Every day at least 150 civilians are killed in Monrovia alone. They are beheaded, they are shot. There is scarcity of food. There is so much problem. Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj has told me to evacuate. Eight United States of American battleships came to Monrovia to rescue American citizens, to rescue people, even Africans. Eight battleships came. And in different ways, by crossing the border, by getting onto boats, getting into battleships, getting into rescue helicopters, airplanes, 150,000 African people have evacuated in the last few months. Ladini Mataji wrote in the letter. Very few people are left and those who are left, they are being killed. But Srila Radhanath Maharaj, I want to tell you, I am not afraid of being killed. I am not afraid of dying. The only thing I am afraid of is to commit Vaishnava Aparad. She wrote like this in that letter. And she said, Prabhupad on the Jaladuta wrote, Ani Yacho Jadi Prabhu Amare Nachate Nachao Nachao Prabhu Nachao Sebate Ani Yacho Jadi Prabhu Srila Prabhupada is praying to Guru Gauranga that somehow you have brought me here in this Ugrasthan, Paschakta Desh, Western countries. Now that you have brought me here, make me dance. Make me dance, make me dance, oh Lord, make me dance the way you want me to dance. Ashlishyava padatam pinashtuma madarshanan marvatam karotuva yatha kathava vijadhatu nampato mata pranatas tu sa eva napara. You are my Lord. You can do whatever you like with me. You can neglect me. You can crush me under your feet. Or you can embrace me. But whatever you do, I am yours. This is the ultimate prayer. This is the highest spiritual realization. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu reveals it in the last chapter of the Antenila of Chaitanya Charitamrit, which was the dearmost scripture of Ladini Mataji. Srila Prabhupada reveals this in his Jalamuta diary. And Prabhupada says, Kashthe raputali yatha nachao se mate nachao nachao prabhu nachao se mate Ladini Mata you said now Srila Prabhupada has brought me to Liberia in the civil war. Now that you have brought me here Srila Prabhupada although I have been given the option by Bhakti Tirith Maharaj to evacuate Oh, there are so many African people, so many librarians that I have preached who are getting connected to you, Srila Prabhupada, who are getting connected to Gaura Nitai, Nitai Gauranga, Jagannath Baldev Subhadra. How can I leave them? How can I leave them? What will happen to their bhakti? Therefore, Srila Prabhupada, I choose to stay. And now, this life is yours. You can kill me, you can embrace me, you can neglect me, you can do whatever you want. But this Ladini Devi Dasi is yours. Whoever I am, whatever I am, I am yours. I have nobody other than you, my dear Guru Gauranga. Do whatever you want with me. Yes, you want me to die in the unholy country, Liberia? Na chao, na chao, Prabhu, na chao. You want me to die outside the temple? Let that happen. Whatever you want, you want to use me as an example? Use me. Whatever you want to do with me, do it. I am yours. I am yours. And Ladini Mataji left her body doing what she wrote to Radharath Maharaj in the letter. The only thing I am afraid of, I am not afraid of death. The only thing I'm afraid of is to commit Vaishnava Aparath. And she left her body trying her best to prevent a Vaishnava Aparath 
from being committed. So it is Ladini Mataji. So we are reading about Dhruva Maharaj going back to the spiritual world by stepping on the head of death personified. Death person, the head of death personified became a stepping stone for Dhruva Maharaj to climb onto the Vaikuntha Viman and go to Vaikuntha Lok. Similarly, I say that the bullets of that pistol and the bullets of those machine guns and death personified in that unholy country of Liberia, outside, away from the temple, which is Vaikuntha, in a very unholy place. Someone may say Ladini Mataji was killed. But Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, he reasons ill who say that Vaishnavas die, for they are still living in sound. Vaishnavas die to live, and while living, they spread the holy name around. Ladini Mataji is still living in the form of sound. When we speak about her, when we glorify her, we are associating with Ladini Mataji. Ladini Mataji stepped on the head of death. Death came. Death came for Dhruva Maharaj also. It's not like Dhruva Maharaj did not die. Death came for Dhruva Maharaj. But death became a stepping stone for Dhruva Maharaj to go to Vaikuntha. Similarly, death became a bahana. Death became an excuse. Death became a stepping stone for Ladini, Ladini Mataji to go back and eternally serve her beloved Nityananda Prabhu in the spiritual world. Yes, Ladini Mataji was not in an externally holy place, but her consciousness was Brajbasi. Her consciousness was Brajbasi. And therefore, Radharat Maharaj says, Avasya Rakshibe Krishna, Krishna protected Ladini Mataji. What did Krishna protect? Krishna's protection goes way beyond the body. Sometimes we pray for devotees, devotee has cancer, oh please pray, devotee is dying, heart attack, stroke, please pray. And the devotee dies. We should not feel disappointed. Because when we chant Narasimha Arati, praying for protection. When we pray to Giriraj, praying for protection. When we chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra, praying for protection. We are not praying for the protection of this temporary body which is going to die anyway. If not now, it will die 30 years later. When we become old. We are not praying for the protection of this body. Krishna may protect the body or Krishna may not protect the body. Hmm? We are praying for the protection of our Krishna consciousness. Krishna protected the consciousness of Ladini Mataji. That is true protection. That is real protection. Krishna protected Draupadi as much as he protected Jatayu. Hmm? When Karna shot his arrow at the neck of Arjun to behead Arjun and Krishna pressed his toe on the ground and the chariot sank and Karna's arrow hit Arjun's helmet and Arjun's life was saved. Krishna saved Arjun as much as he saved Abhimanyu. Both were saved equally because the consciousness of both of them was saved, was rescued by Krishna. Avashya Rakshi by Krishna. That is the meaning of Avashya Rakshi by Krishna. Rakhe Krishna, Mare Ke, Mare Krishna, Rakhe Ke. If Krishna protects your Krishna consciousness, who can kill your Krishna consciousness? Yes, Ladini Mataji was 100% protected. The loyal servant of Srila Prabhupada, the servant of Srimati Radharani who worshipped Jagannath Baldev Subhadra all her life with Brajabha, with Brajabhakti. Yes, she was protected because her Krishna consciousness was protected. This was Ladini Mataji. And just like Dhruva Maharaj, death became a stepping stone for her to go back to the spiritual world. What a glorious death. Spiritually, yes, what a glorious death in glorious consciousness. But even materially, what a glorious death. She doesn't have to become old like us. She doesn't have to tolerate arthritis like us. She doesn't have to suffer from migraines like us. She doesn't have to grow old, be in a coma for many days and then die. That could also be glorious. But Ladini Mataji was young, 41 year old and boom! She hears some gunfire and she wakes up in Goro Vrindavan. Isn't that glorious? Very glorious. Very glorious. That's why we celebrate the Tirobha Pithi. 
we celebrate the tirumal tithi of our acharyas because we celebrate their success in krishna consciousness they are the real celebrities for us the sports stars and movie stars are not the celebrities for us our acharyas are celebrities for us we celebrate their success in krishna consciousness so these were some of the thoughts i wanted to share about this glorious return of dhruva maharaj to the spiritual world we cannot relate to dhruva maharaj but we can relate to ladini mata ji so we should feel inspired and we should carry on with great fire on this path of krishna consciousness jagat guru shrila prabhupad ki jai granth raj shrimad bhagavatam ki jai nitai gaur premanandi hari hari bol